Hi, Marie here from Pottery Crafters. In the last video, I showed you how to make two different shaped candle holders. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to decorate them. First, I'm going to glaze them. Then, I'm going to overglaze them for that extra touch of elegance. All the supplies used in this video are listed for you below in the show notes. Let's start glazing. First, a quick review on prepping before applying the glazes. Of course, I can't assume everyone knows this. Wash your bisque ware with a clean damp sponge to ensure your glaze bonds nicely to the candle holders. Any oils or residue may prevent the glaze from adhering well, so make sure your hands are clean and dry or wear gloves. Mix your glaze well. I really like this blender. It gets to the bottom of the Amico jars, which is a big plus. Then run it through a strainer to avoid clumps of glaze or debris getting on the brush or your pottery. I want to decorate the bottom a bit. I'm applying watered down black underglaze to the bottom of both the candle holders, just to accent the patterns. If you use a wavy wire cutter, you can have fun with it and use any underglaze color you like. Let them dry. Use a clean damp sponge to wipe the underglaze off the raised area to show the pattern on the bottom. The underglaze will not stick to the bottom, especially since I've watered down the underglaze and wiped it off on the top part of the waves. I have a video and a post on my Pottery Crafters website with 21 underglaze tips where I go over underglazing the bottom of pottery. I left a link for you below in the show notes. Now I'll apply some film resist. You can also apply wax resist. You have to peel off the film resist, whereas the wax resist will just burn off in the kiln. Now I can start glazing. I'm glazing the first candle holder with Amico Obsidian. I like using these soft fan brushes. The glaze seems to go on more evenly and smoother for me with these brushes. I have tried many brushes over the years and keep going back to these. The set gives you six sizes to choose from. The link is below for you to check out. The bisque really soaks in the first coat of glaze. That's why I bisque fired a Kono 4. If I'd fire lower to cone 06, the bisque fire will be more porous and soak up the glaze even more. Let this dry. Once dry, apply a second coat of obsidian. One of my favorite glazes is obsidian. I love this glaze so much I'd buy it by the gallon. Its deep black finish transforms any ceramic piece into a stunning work of art. When layering with flowing glazes like seaweed, blue rutile, and indigo float, you can get some beautiful, intense, vivid blue and green hues. Let it dry. Once dry, apply a third and final coat of obsidian. Three coats are good. If the glaze is too thick, you can get pinholes, even blistering. If you haven't seen the last video on making these candle holders, I left the link for you below in the show notes. You want to be mindful of the holes. Try not to have the glaze pool around them. Set this aside and let it dry for a bit. I'm glazing the second candle holder with Amico Weeping Plum. This is also a celadon glaze. I've chosen this lighter weeping plum glaze to see how the mother of pearl overglaze will look on the lighter weeping plum. This celadon glaze is translucent. So the thinner it is, the more you'll see through the clay body. With that said, if the clay were darker, you'd get a much darker pink. And the darker clay will show through. Let this dry. Once dry, apply a second coat. The Weeping Plum does create a beautiful glossy finish. The pink hue is deep and somewhat rosy, which gives a unique eye-catching appearance. Although this glaze is known for its ability to pool in carved areas for a striking effect, 
My experience with this glaze has been when I apply it to a smooth surface, it has been very stable. You can hit the like button anytime during the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video comes out. Let this dry. Once dry, apply a third coat to get a nice deep pink. One of the distinct qualities of this glaze is its compatibility with different clays and underglazes. Adjusting the transparency and shade by applying more or less coats to suit specific projects, allowing for a broad range of creative possibilities. Be mindful of the glaze pooling by the holes. To learn more about brush glazing, I have a video on 21 brush glazing tips. I left the link for you below in the show notes. Set this aside and let it dry a bit. I'm going over these holes with this needle tool and wiping the glaze off the needle tool with a damp sponge. I don't want the holes to be plugged up with glaze when the candle holders are fired in the kiln. This is a critical part because the glaze can't be too wet or too dry. It's really hard to get the glaze out of the holes if the glaze is too wet. And if you wait too long, the glaze will get too hard and crack off around the holes. You can use wood, metal, or even a plastic tool for this. Just be mindful of the glaze's stage of dryness. Once the candle holders are dry, I'll remove the film resist and they'll go into the kiln for a cone 5 firing with a 20 minute hold. Now that they've been glazed and fired, it's time to apply the overglaze. There are a few things I need to go over before applying the overglaze. I'm using Duncan Mother of Pearl Overglaze, which is now Mako because Duncan has transitioned to Mako. Don't stir or shake the overglaze. You'll need a soft natural hair brush for a smooth application. It's important to use the brush only for mother of pearl to avoid contamination. The Duncan Essence Cleaner plays a critical role. Essence ensures brushes used with overglaze are thoroughly cleaned, preventing issues like separation of the overglaze during applications. This specialized cleaner maintains the quality and integrity of the overglaze. When using both the overglaze and the essence cleaner, use gloves to protect your skin from direct contact. Always work in a well-ventilated area to avoid inhaling fumes. I go outside and wear my half-mask respirator. The application is straightforward. I'm applying one coat to the obsidian candle holder with overlapping swirl strokes for a swirl appearance. The mother of pearl is a dark blue liquid that's very hard to see when applying it to this obsidian candle holder. Try to keep the overglaze application even. Now I'll apply the Mother of Pearl to the Weeping Plum candle holder. Mother of Pearl Overglaze is a translucent overglaze known for its shimmering pearl finish. I have never applied the Mother of Pearl to these colors. This is much better. I can see where I'm applying the overglaze to the Weeping Plum. I can see the swirl marks so I don't over apply the overglaze. After applying one coat to each candle holder, I'll allow them to dry completely. The candle holders need to be stilted. That is to put on stilts for proper airflow around them. Firing is done at low temperature. For mother of pearl, it's cone O20, which is 1160 degrees Fahrenheit or 626 degrees Celsius and fired on the fast speed. Two beautiful candle holders. The obsidian candle holder does have a nice shiny luster with beautiful blue and pink hues. I can also see green in there. 
I like the accent of the colors on it. I think it turned out pretty good. And I think the bottom turned out pretty good also. I really like how the weeping plum turned out. I do like the mother of pearl on the lighter glazes. And I think the bottom turned out pretty good also. I love how the overglaze transforms plain surfaces into vibrant, shimmering works of art. The mother of pearl overglaze is a fantastic way to give your ceramics a beautiful, authentic look. Which one do you like better? You watching helps me to make more videos, like this one. Now head on over to my Testing 3 Amico Glaze Combinations video or my Testing 7 New Amico Flux Glaze Combinations video. If you do, I get to play with more clay. Till next time, let's stay dirty.